I don't know if you need to actually sign it. Is the motion on basketball? Did you have to approve it? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Anybody else feel come on the first game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Everybody always Defenders does. Team, uh, young with Bay Max. Got all that. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our council meeting this evening. If you would please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Johnson, will you give us the honor of given the invocation this evening. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to get together. Father, we thank you for community. And we just ask that of the mayor and council and the community, as we make decisions, that we do it fair, that we do it objectively, and that we do what's right in the best interest for the residents, for the city of Canton. We do this in your name we pray. Amen. I'd like to call our February 15th, 2024 council meeting to order. We'll begin with a consideration to approve tonight's agenda. Are there any revisions or additions or motions? Motion to approve the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. All members voted for the motion. <clears throat> you have in your packet uh, Two sets of minutes, one from our draft minutes from our special called work session on February 1st, and then the minutes from our council meeting uh, on February 1st. Are there any changes or revisions to those minutes or a motion? Motion to approve the minutes. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Opposed nay. All members voted for the motion. Thank you. Uh, do we have any announcements this evening? Okay. If not, we will move on to our 10 minute public input. We have three <coughs> citizens signed up. Uh, Ms. Pat Tanner, again, please come forward and state your name and address and speak clearly into the microphone. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for allowing me this time to speak to you. I just wanted to follow up on the meeting that you had last, uh, the first of the month. And at that time, Council Member Johnson raised the question about the number of people, the Stump Town Project is what I'm speaking about, the number of people that were still living in the community. So it got my mind to working and I went back and walked around and checked. We still have seven original families that are still living in the community. There are still like 32 original structures dwelling that are still in that community. And uh, the purpose of Stump Town in the presentation that History Cherokee Miss White made was regarding the legacy and history of that community. As I stated that evening, I grew up in Canton. My church home is still in Canton. And when uh, I think it was Miss Patricia Pitt put the idea out front for the uh, history of Cherokee and Miss White started work with Miss Pitts and community members. Everyone thought that it was a great idea for the uh, for this particular project, and we have shared this with people who grew up in Stumptown. They think that it is a beautiful idea as well. So I wanted to come back and let you know that. This is just not putting up sign, but this is about the legacy and the history of that community. And as people move away, the history and the legacy sometimes goes with them. And when the good Lord calls a lot of our matriarchs and patriarchs from us, that history goes with them. So we're still working with History Cherokee and providing pictures, uh, letters from 
those who are still with us, and there are, I think, basically, there's only still one matriarch, which happens to be my mother, who still has a home in the community, and thank God he's blessed us with her for 96 years, and she'll be celebrating in March. So, again, for your consideration, we thank you. If you would look favorably on this project, it would mean a lot to those of us who are still here, those who have gone on, the descendants who come back for family reunions, et cetera, et cetera. So positive thinking on my part for all of you to support this project, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Tanner. Caleb Creighton. Hi, my name is Caleb Creighton. I reside at 312 Lakeview Terrace here in Canton, Georgia. Uh, thank you, Mayor and esteemed members of the council for recognizing me to speak. At the last meeting two weeks ago, I read statistics about the genocide happening in Gaza and asked the board to consider passing a ceasefire resolution like Atlanta in 48, now 70 other cities have done 22 more than last time. A quick recap of those statistics, 70% of the Palestinians killed are women and children, 70% of all homes in Gaza are destroyed, 80% of the world's catastrophically hungry are in Gaza, 10,000 children have been killed in four months, the equivalent of all deaths so far in Ukraine in two years, one in 10 children have diarrhea, while 700 people on average share one toilet. The number is now 1.5 out of 10. And 4.3, uh, the equivalent of 4.3 nuclear bombs, 65,000 tons of explosives, have been dropped in a place more densely populated than New York City of a population of 50% children. This time I didn't come to read statistics, though. I came to tell a story of what happened between the last time I spoke and now, about a six-year-old girl named Hin Rajab. She was traveling in a car with her uncle, aunt, and three cousins, six people in total, four children. They were fleeing south following evacuation orders set by Israel. Like I said earlier, 70% of houses have been bombed, so staying put is not an option for these people. As they were fleeing in a black Kia, Israel opened fire on the car with guns and tanks. The attack killed everyone except for six-year-old Hind and her 15-year-old cousin, Leon. As they hid in the car with four dead family members in it, Leon made a phone call to the Red Crescent in Palestine. I'll read the transcript. Hello. Operator, hello. Leon, they're shooting at us. They are firing at us. Operator, hello. Leon, they're shooting at us. The tank is next to me. Operator, are you hiding? Leon, yes. In the car, the tank is next to us. Operator, are you in the car? Gunshots, screaming, silence. Hello. Hello. This is the audio file that the contents of this audio recording are disturbing. By a miracle, the six-year-old survived. Here she was trapped in a car with five dead family members. And what does this brave girl do? She picks up the phone and calls the Red Crescent. Hence, this is part of the three-hour-long conversation with the operator trying to console her. Come take me. You will come take me. Operator, do you want me to come take you? Hind, I am so scared. Please come. Please call someone to take me. So the Red Crescent upheld their end of the bargain. They sent an ambulance with two heroes named Yusuf Zaino and Ahmed Madhun. When the paramedics arrived on the scene, they were both executed. The ambulance was found burned out with both men in it, 
despite, and I quote the Red Crescent, prior coordination to allow the ambulance to reach the location. This ambulance was Hin's last hope. It wasn't until 12 days later, five days ago, that she was found next to her five family members and two paramedics just meters away. Two days after her body was found, Congress approved 95 more billion more dollars of aid and weapons to Israel. Two weeks ago, I asked you guys to pass a ceasefire resolution. I don't see it. It's okay. Government works slow. It's fine. But we're on a clock because that was only four of the 10,000 children that have died so far. Any questions? Thank, Thank you for my time. Thank you, Mr. Creighton. Ms. Krista Everett. My name is Chris Everett, and I live at 133 Hidden Trail Court. Mr. Mayor, Council, after hearing some of those stats, I guess I would have to say I have a first world problem. Um, I'd like to thank the mayor for organizing uh, a committee to review the senior exemption, and hopefully we'll bring something to the council soon that uh, will uh, modify that exemption. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Driver. We'll move forward into old business, and I, we have one item, item A, discussion and possible action on case CUP 2312-001, request to operate a social club, civic or fraternal, at 108 Riverstone Parkway, Suite 110A. Mr. Green? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, as you have just stated, the application for the conditional use permit, CUP 2312-001, is a request to operate a social club, civic, or fraternal organization at 108 Riverstone Parkway, Suite 110A. Um, this application came before you at the last meeting in a public hearing. This is the same group that applied for and received uh, CUP for the exact same type of operation in the Kroger Shopping Center in the south part of town. For whatever reasons they were unable to execute that lease with the folks that own the shopping center, so they made the application for the address just mentioned. Um, you have before you the copy of the resolution. Most of those conditions were what was approved in the previous approval, and with one added that the applicant has agreed to relinquish or rescind their approval for the location in the Kroger Shopping Center. And it is on tonight's agenda for discussion and possible action. Thank you, Mr. Green. Uh, do you have the conditions in front of you? If not, I can, I can read them. All right, um, they were somewhat modified to fit the current a location. Number one, the approval is only for Eden Community Centers, Inc. Number two, there should be no outside loudspeakers or any other device that is used for the amplification of voice. The property shall only be used as described in the applicant's letter of intent. Uh, the occupancy load has determined by the City of Canton Fire and Life Safety Manager shall be adhered to. Number five, the applicant agrees to relinquish the previously approved conditional use permit CUP 2303-001 located at 4043 Marietta Highway, Suite 100. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Green. So again, we had a public hearing at our last meeting and just uh, for clarification, this is not an additional permit. It is replacing the previous one uh, Request this replace the previous one that they will be relinquishing if this one is approved, correct? Okay. And uh, Mr. Dyer, could you also, just for the record and for council and public's um, uh, knowledge, just kind of state clearly what council is voting on tonight? The, the uh, 
agenda item calls for and the applicant asks for a conditional use permit to be a social club, civic or fraternal, which is the zoning category that's permitted in general commercial, but only with a conditional use permit. So you would just be authorizing uh, the use of the space as a social club. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dyer. Any discussion or any questions for Mr. Green or Mr. Dyer? Mr. Waterman? Mr. Green, uh, concerning uh, condition number one, approval being only for Eden Community Centers. So should this uh, be approved, does the branding or the, uh, the storefront, would that say Eden Community Centers? I'm not sure what type of advertisement or what they would have on their uh, uh, storefront. Typically, this is a similar condition that is pl placed on churches because all churches require a conditional use permit. And when they have come before the council, uh, the council has uh, authorized them or that space only for that particular church. So if they were to move out, another church could not come in looking at the same way for this community center, if they uh, cease to function or find another location, if a similar type organization wanted to use that space, they would have to go through the same CUP process. Yeah, if, if I could just, the, the enforcement would be on who's on the lease. That's really what we would be talking about. If it's a different organization or a corporation or LLC, or uh, that would be the violation or at least in the, if it was a different entity. Okay, so if I, as Eden Community Centers, and I decide to call it, you know, Bob's Big Boy, is that an issue? No. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments? I, I mean, I guess I would say <laughs> this is, that would indicate some potential violation of the being a social club if you were Bob's big boys. And well, and we, I, was, we I, was trying go to go, I was trying to go extreme, but right. if I were to call it anything other than Eden. Eden that'd be sense. okay. okay. It, like I said, it would just be perhaps uh, a, an indicator that we would have to go look and make sure it was still what we thought it was. Mr. Mayor, if there is no more discussion, I would like to make a motion. Okay, Ms. Matilda. As it relates to CUP 2312-001, request to operate a social club or fraternal at 108 Riverstone Parkway, Suite 110A, I make a motion that we approve this, this application. Okay. Second. We have a motion. With, um, thank you, Ms. Portman. With the five conditions as noted by Mr. Green, thank you. We have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Any further questions or co discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed nay. All members voted for the motion. We'll move into new business now. Item A, discussion of resurf resurfacing intergovernmental agreement with Cherokee County. Mr. Peppers. Order an auditorium. Good move. Mr. Peppers, go ahead. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, as you're aware, we do uh, paving every year, resurfacing projects through our local maintenance grants that we receive from the state of Georgia. Uh, as part of that, uh, this past year, we decided that we would partner with the other cities in Cherokee County to have all of our projects lumped together into one competitive bid package, uh, really for two reasons. One, we thought that the larger the bid package, the more uh, competition we could get from potential bidders. And two, that we might um, eliminate some costs as it relates to things like mobilization fees and all of that by working with one bidder to do all of that work. So what you have before you is an intergovernmental agreement. 
uh, with Cherokee County, which would allow them to do the resurfacing on behalf of the city. Uh, this is a draft of that agreement. It will have an appendix in there that gives an estimate of what that work will cost. The bids are currently out right now. Their hope is to get the bids in the 1st of March and to be able to issue that contract later in March so that they can move forward with scheduling that work. It does not give up any of the city's control over the review of the paving projects. So for example, we will do all of the testing. We'll be required to go out as paving's done and make sure it's done to our standards. All of the standards are recorded in the contract, so we have an opportunity to make our contract. Uh, but I brought it to you so that you could look at the agreement and have any questions that you might have asked uh, ahead of, of bringing a final contract to you in March. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. There are a list of streets that are listed in there. Most of the streets are in the uh, North Canton Mill Village area, uh, formerly the ABC streets, uh, and they are enumerated in the appendix. Thank you, Mr. Ruffers. So just for clarification, will you be asking us to approve the IGA and the paving contract or the vendor at the same time? That is correct. So what you will receive uh, with the next agenda will include an updated appendix. Uh, as you see in the current intergovernmental agreement, it gives the estimated amount for the work. Uh, in the formal agreement, it will have the total. Thank you. And this wouldn't be authorizing Cherokee County and their uh, crew to be doing the pavement. It's, it's authorizing them to do a contract with a private paving contractor, is correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Peppers? Thanks, sir. And we're already up to your report. Yes. <laughs> so, so as was mentioned earlier tonight by uh, Ms. Tanner, uh, as you'll recall, we did have a presentation at the last meeting from History Cherokee about some historic uh, placemaking signage in the Stumptown community. Uh, that particular item came in at a cost of about $1,500. It did not include shipping or any freight related to that. We estimate that the entire project would be a little bit less than $2,000. It will include some manpower from the city for the actual installation of the sign and prepping of the site for the sign. Uh, because of the of the total amount of the project, it's within my spending authority. Uh, but because it's it's it wasn't originally budgeted for the city, we may have to come back later in the year and ask for a budget amendment if, if that's required. We won't know yet. Uh, but I think it would be uh, a, a benefit both to History Cherokee and staff if council would consider adding that as an agenda item tonight if you so desire so that the uh, approval could take place uh, formally in the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Reppers. Uh, I would like to ask if there, uh, council would consider a motion adding the sign of the agenda for approval of the concept. Um, and since this is our last meeting in, in February, and it's Black History Month, I think this would be a wonderful thing to Council approved tonight to move forward with the discuss of Mr. Peppers and um, uh, just for clarification, the city would be responsible for the final design and installation quality control uh, because so I know we've discussed about doing this for other historic neighborhoods, correct? That is correct. Okay. Do we have a motion to add this to the agenda? Motion to add the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. So we'll add the agenda item um, and I'd ask for a motion if council is in favor of a, approving, uh, uh, moving forward with this concept uh, uh, for the stump sound signage working with History Cherokee. Um, as Mr. Peppers mentioned, we're talking about less than $2,000 and uh, uh, I guess final estimates and installation shipping, all that will be be forwarded. But uh, any questions, discussion, so there are motions? Ms. Warner? Specifically. I guess the motion would be to 
to approve move the forward, move forward. Move forward. the signage for Stumptown. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve and move forward uh, with the signage for Stumptown as presented. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Or the motion and second. Are there any further discussions, questions? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All members voted for the motion. The only other item I would like to mention tonight, our team member of the month for December was Ms. C.C. Meyer. She works in our utility billing department. Uh, she is one of our uh, meter reading technicians around the city. It's an interesting time for them right now because uh, we're also putting in place our automated meter reading system. And so they are helping us with that. Uh, I believe, if I understood correctly, we were able to pick up about 70% of our meter reads called so that program is really going to be great uh, CC's been with us for a while and and she's just always got a positive attitude when she comes to work generally speaking when the public reaches out and cc has been out there to help them she always gets very high praise for for her work ethic and, and what she puts into the role so we wanted to recognize her uh, in, in that achievement so okay. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have for me tonight and congratulations, Ms. Meyer, on her great work. So, any questions from Mr. Peppers? Thanks, sir. Thank you. We had no council introduced items at time of agenda approval. Just double checking, as always. <laughs> um, again, I don't have any specific things in my report. Uh, we, I think, most of the boards and commissions appointments were were made. I would remind council there, there's still a, a couple of you have not uh, made appointments to the ethics committee. Again, we have nothing pending there, but if we just uh, would like to get those in place sooner rather than later. And there are uh, still a couple appointments. Are there any appointments anyone wants to make this evening? Ms. McGrew? I'd like to make the appointment of Ms. Jackie Wickersham to the tourism board, please. Okay. I guess that was a nomination for appointment. Is there a second for that? Second. Okay. Any other appointments? Okay. So we have. Uh, yes. Uh, Ms. McGrew has uh, nominated Ms. Jackie Wickersham to the Tourism Board. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All members voted for the motion. And. That is all I have this evening. Again, uh, I know Mr. Everett spoke earlier. Uh, we did have a great uh, initial meeting with the uh, review committee for the senior tax exemption. And I want to thank those members in, in addition to Mr. Everett, uh, uh, Ms. Joellen Wilson, Ms. Chrissy Estes, and Mr. Raj Paul Sagu, who, who are serving on that committee. We had a great uh, conversation discuss some issues, uh, we'll be meeting again soon, uh, and to keep that dialogue going forward. So um, uh, I want to thank Mr. Johnson also for attending that meeting. So, um, And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn for this evening. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.